This is part two in the EPUB cleanup video. In this one, we're going to be adding a chapter graphic using the sigil program. And I have the program open now on the screen. So let's go up here and we'll start at the beginning. We're not going to be using any chapter headers until I think uh, this one is 006. This is the first one. All right. Now, let me get my cheat sheet up here again. I, I sort of cleaned up the cheat sheet that I'll be uploading so that you can download it. And let me get to the part where we're going to be doing the chapter headers. Okay, here it is. This is the HTML right here that we're going to be copying and pasting in each of the files. And there's going to be two bits of information that we are going to change. The first bit of information is going to be here. We're going to take the link and change this to whatever our program calls the picture once it pulls it into the project. And then the second thing we're going to change is this here. We're going to change copyright to whatever chapter number. So when we're in chapter one, we're going to change this to chapter one. Next file will be chapter two, etc. Okay. Now, this is the HTML coding for a table. And what I want to say about this is every single quote and bracket is crucial. So you have to be very slow and methodical when you make these changes because if you leave off one bracket it will break the code and it won't work. So what I'm going to suggest if you are a beginner is to make a second copy of your project. In other words go up here and then click on save a copy and just call it, you know, save copy, whatever you want to call it. And then this way, if as you're working through the project, something breaks, let's say something breaks down here in chapter five, rather than having to look through every little bit of this code for a forgotten, one forgotten bracket or one forgotten quote, it's easier to copy and paste into the project from a safe copy. So as we get, if, as we go along, I'll explain a little bit more about that. So anyway, here's what we're going to do. Let's go back to 006, which is where we're going to start. And the coding on the pages is all starts really. This is all meta tags and links for the coding and stuff like that. The page begins with your body class tag. Now in my conversion. It's called Calibre. The software gave it that name. Okay, so you have to find whatever your class is called for your body tag. That's where you're going to go. The next space is where you're going to post your HTML tags. So let me go back here and get my table tag here. Okay, I'm going to surround everything and click Control C to copy. And then right here, control V to post. Okay. Now, as you look over here, it has a little tiny icon that is broken. And that's because the, this tag here is pointing to nothing because I haven't pulled the picture in yet, but it's just there so that you have it. So let's go up here to the insert tab and then insert a file and let's see we're going to do an image and i'm going to do other files and here i'm in the uh let's see i wanted one that was 400. yeah mystery romance okay here we go the reason it has two is because the program named this the same as it did the last time i used the program and so it then recognize this coding, this coding here. So I'm going to take one of them out. Okay, so there was, when I deleted the one uh, graphic 
I inadvertently, inadvertently deleted a closing tag. So this is the perfect time for me to explain about coding. Each of these codes has to have a, let me, let me use the, the bigger copy here. Each of these tags, this is the table tag, it opens the table and it needs to have a closing tag. The body tag, the same thing. This is the opening tag with a class means it, it gives it some styling. You don't need to know much more about it than that. And this one has a closing tag for the body. Every row has to have an open tag and a closed tag. And so inside the, the row, you can have as many um, data uh, containers as you want. Of course, each one will get smaller and smaller, but we're only using one. But each table data box, so to speak, has to have an opening tag and it has to have a closing tag. And so if any of these tags are missing, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get stuck and you're going to think, oh dear, what's going on now? So what you need to do is check your tags. So I have an open, close, body, open, close. Row is open. Here's the, here's the close. Now, for this graphic, the tag that got erased was the closing of the data. So once I put that in, you see how all of a sudden the errors disappear. Okay. So now I have, this is the new header. Okay. So I'm going to go down here and erase this other one. And that's going to be the way the image looks. So we're going to do that for every single chapter. And let me go back to my cheat sheet here and I'm going to copy. Find my body class tag, give myself a little space, paste. Okay, and this is going to be chapter two. Okay, and then I'm going to come down here and erase this chapter two here. All right. So I'm going to go through all of the files here doing the same thing. And if I encounter some other tricky situation, which I know is coming, by the way, I will stop and then I'll come back and tell you how to resolve it. So I'm just going to continue to put the graphic graphics inside the chapters. Okay, so I've encountered another situation that might be a bit confusing to a, a newbie. So I came in and after my body tag, I put my table coding in. And when I come down here, the title is no longer called an H1 tag. It has this... Uh, just random text that for some reason was pulled in here. So make sure that you delete all of this. Okay, so what you want is the next thing you want is for your book, for your chapter to start. So don't be afraid to uh, delete things that just look crazy because for some reason these converters do add a lot of crazy tags. So, okay, I'm going to continue on. And if I see anything else, I'll be back. Okay. So I went through the whole project and I added the chapter header graphic. And I, once I was done, I went back and I checked my work. There was one that I had skipped over. So it's all set now. So the coding that's on the Cheat sheet will be exactly the coding that I used here. So I'm going to put it on pause for one more minute. And what I'm going to do is check it on Amazon to make sure that it uploads and it, and with the previewer, it looks okay. I'll be right back. Here is the book. I have uploaded it to KDP, pulled it up into the previewer. 
and the first thing that happened is that it noticed there was a spelling error. So when I clicked on it, it took me to chapter six. I found the error and I have corrected it in my sigil file. So I just wanted to show you that all of the coding is working. I have to uh, make my copyright picture just a little bit bigger, which I can do in a minute. And the other thing I want to do, there was something else I wanted to do, but here it is. You can see that the graphic looks okay. This is the tablet format. Let me see if I can do. This is landscape. Let's take a look at it in landscape. Everything else is working. The paragraphs are all set up nicely. Okay, it also works in landscape. So let's do the phone. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we'll do portrait on the phone. Okay, and it's the same thing. It's, uh, it's doing okay. And then the last one is the Kindle e-reader. And I believe this one will be okay also. So the coding all works. And uh, for some reason, I just like the chapter graphics. I think it gives the reader a little bit more of a, a nice experience when they're reading the book. <laughs> Sorry for all the sniffling. <laughs> I have allergies today. Okay, so that's checking everything. I'm going to check it just a little bit further on, but I won't bore you with it on the video. Um, so I'll be back in a moment when I'm done with this. Okay, so I ran into one issue here that I want to mention. And this is why it's important to check every page. As I was going through chapter 25, checking every page, I came upon this. This paragraph right here, for some reason, the font is completely different. So when I go back to um, the sigil file, I think this one is 25. Let's see. Um, I think, yeah, leave the bar. Let's see here. Okay, so this one had given a different style. So what I did was I looked above and this was using a block three. So I just changed this one to block three and then it resolved that issue. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. Then the other thing I wanted to point out was chapter five, which is... Let me go position chapter five and then I'll be back. Okay, so I positioned myself at a place where I can show you the next thing I want to mention. I use these scene endings here, this little, these little symbols, okay? And in the beginning, I used to use them at the end of the chapters also, but I stopped using them for the following reason. This is chapter five, okay? And inevitably, they at least one of them falls on a separate page. And there's no way that you can fix this in Word or anywhere else. So I no longer use these at the end of a chapter for this particular reason. So I'm going to go back to the sigil file and take it out of chapter five. And I have gone through and checked the entire book. And everything else is very good. It's, uh, I checked every single page. So I'm sure about the coding that I'm giving you on the cheat sheet. And this ends this video. So if you learned something, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in the next video.